So in this uh, kind of simulation, we need to create scenarios using another solver available in Serial Gems. They call it the Explicit Solver. It's the solver uh, created by Swim, Epa Swim. So with this solver, you can run two types of what we call it simulation: the pollutant analysis uh, and the uh, H2S, the sulf hydrogen sulfide modeling. In our exercise, we're going to see how to model a pollutant using a dynamic wave uh, simulation. So for pollutant analysis, uh, you can deal with two kinds of uh, sources of pollutant. One type is based on catchments and another source of pollutant can be places at node like a point source. So in catchments you need to describe the land use, the pollutant build-up rate, the wash-off function and assign the land use to catchment. If you're going to use a point source, you need to define first the pollutograph and then assign it to a node. So to use a pollutant, you need first to define it and some of its properties, like shown here in this slide, like name, units, and the background source that can be a rain, groundwater, groundwater or an infiltration and inflow. There are two overall categories of pollutant loads depending on the problem uh, you're solving. So for non-pointing, it's more applicable for agricultural land, industrial stormwater loads or urban wash-off. And point loads, it's good to, to model domestic loads or industrial process loads. If you have a concentrated industrial load, let's say a BOD, a, a plus a rainfall at a node, and you want to specify the concentration, you put the rainfall at a nearby catch basin, not at the metal, or else it will be assigned the height concentration. So here is a, a kind of an overview of the steps to perform a water quality analysis for point and non-point sources of pollutant. So first you define the pollutant. It's um, it's like a library like we we saw in the previous previous workshop where you define the storm data. So for a uh, for a point source, you go to the right, you need to define the pollutograph and then assign to a node. And if you'd like to use a non-point source, you define the land use, build up and wash off and assign to a catchment. And finally, you need to use a scenario with a explicit solver on the calculation options. And then you are good to run your scenario. The hydrogen sulfide forms in wastewater collection system when an oxygen condition exists and results in corrosion, odor, and toxic problems. The rate of formation depends primarily on the strength of the wastewater as characterized by the BOD concentration, the biochemical oxygen demand and rate constants for the reaction which are dependent on temperature. 
Hydrogen sulfide is most commonly a problem in systems with long detection times in warm weather. The calculations are uh, based on the Pomeroy Parkhouse equation for predicting the H2S concentration in a sewer network. They can be used to evaluate the built up or decay of the H2S concentration in a sewer system. The sewer system can be gravit and pressure combined system consisting of conduit ponds, channel wet wells pond, pressure pipes and junctions. This is the parkhaus palmer equation. The first term, term the equation covers the creation of sulfide while the second refers to loss. And the BOD is essentially a temperature corrected BOD given by a modified vent. Uh, equation. So values of M and N should be calibrated. The values of uh, the M and N can be uh, moderately conservative and more conservative depend of the occasion. The right term, uh, the first term modified to account of sulfid for sulfid generation in the stream and assume zero uh, DO in the wastewater. For the input data for this kind of simulation, you can add directly to a node the H2S concentration or the BOD initial concentration. It's uh, all this information is stored in the water quality alternative. You can also add on conduit elements. In the conduit elements you add temperature, the H2S flux coefficient and the H2S loss factor. The H2S forming link element and is a function of temperature. After running um, the water quality uh, scenario, you can add results as we can do with uh, other regular uh, hydraulic results, such as color codings, annotations, graphs, and uh, element annotations. Now about continuous simulation. When you do long-term continuous simulation, you need to account for things like aquifer levels and evaporation, which are not very important in event-oriented analysis. All this information can be specified in the components menu within swing extensions. Another important thing is to, to provide the rainfall series also available for an FWS and again it's only applicable for the explicit solver. This shows how the swim hydrology routine accounts for flow. In the event hydrology, once the water becomes infiltration, it doesn't get back into the sewer, but in long-term simulation, it may enter as base infiltration. So this is the lecture about water quality. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.